Hello, sorry you have to actually suffer some uh, bright light on the part of this video, but I have no way of actually showing you this phenomenon with a conventional uh, supercell, which I have over here. Um, this is a uh, very sensitive, and I'm probably going to damage it because of the cylinder magnet that's here, uh, very sensitive and very mostly translucent um, supercell uh, created by the inventor of uh, the ferro cell. And uh, what I actually have suspended in here with uh, LED lights around it is just a little cylinder magnet. Um, first, let's talk about the conjugate field. I recently let you upload the definitions and the link for the definitions below. It's a free download on uh, the conjugate field of magnetism. The conjugate field, as you'll probably already have read, is the magnetodielectric. And of course, the uh, field of magnetism, of course, is toroidal, and the field of the dielectric is a hyperboloid, or an hourglass shape. And the superimposition of each one of these is a negative image of the other. Magnetism is, of course, the dielectric field, and I'm actually going to show you something. We know that there is a toroidal donut of the magnetic field that surrounds the cylinder magnet. I'll pull it actually out here. It's just sitting in there free form, a little cylinder magnet, placed right here in the middle with the light coming up around it and projecting above. And uh, inverse to that, right at the center, as you've seen in countless, literally hundreds of videos that I've uploaded, you see the uh, dielectric field or portal towards counter space, counter space, the plane of inertia, the hyperboloidal geometry of increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. the dielectric. And these two, of course, make up the uh, conjugate geometry of the universe. So it stands to reason, and I've never shown you this in the countless hundreds, literally hundreds of uh, supercell videos that I've shown you, that the toroidal geometry of the magnetism around the cylinder magnet, which of course is just an ether perturbation modality. That's all a field is. Let me repeat that again. Ether perturbation modality extends up and around this uh, cylinder magnet and obviously too on the other side. And as you approach closer um, towards the magnet, you'll actually have increasing inertia acceleration as we approach or dig into as we get closer with this uh, this is two pieces of very, very thin glass inside of a 3D printed uh, plastic frame, and it's just been glued inside there, but very, very thin glass. So two pieces of optical flat glass. That as I dig into the toroidal geometry of the magnetism is that I will be uh, exactly like approaching a, uh, a donut, if you will, as if I were to, I had a donut laying right here. That represents the magnetic toroidal field as I actually come closer. Um, with my single eye or with the camera, I will be seeing less and less of the donut and more and more of the hole. But um, the uh, toroidal geometry of the magnetism that extends above this at a certain distance should be mostly magnetism. Everywhere, as I've told you before in other videos, where we see light underneath the supercell, what we're actually seeing is, of course, magnetism. And everywhere we see the absence of light, let me actually put this little... Um, cylinder magnet, which I can't see since I'm in the dark right now. Oh, there we go. Hello. It's right there in front of me. Let me put it right here and zoom in. Or actually, let me just put it underneath the supercell and let the image form. The supercell is mostly dead. I need to rebuild it. Everywhere we see light is magnetism. Everywhere we don't see light is a dielectric. Right here in the center, of course, this little black hole. Everybody loves to call it a black hole, and it's very similar in many aspects, and not only analogously, but also too nearly perfectly. We see the dielectric, but that's because this magnet's face is pressed directly up against it. If I were to actually lift this up and it were powerful enough, I would see that uh, where it's black right here, would actually see an increase of light to uh, almost like a, a holographic sphere because I'm actually up and above. I can't actually do that or represent that even with a supercell, but I can with this little cell in a second. I would see a ball of light because I'm actually extended up and above uh, the dielectric portal or increasing inertia and acceleration of uh, where the face of the magnet is that this uh, large supercell is resting on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magnet, I'm going to place it right here, which is basically in the center of some little LEDs, and I'm going to use my hand, zoom out here, use my hand to hover, let you look, like again, once again, I'm sorry that these bright lights, let me zoom in a little further here, there we go, sorry that these uh, lights are bright and are peeking into your eyes like they are mine, but let's see what we actually have here. So right now I'm hovering about an inch or so above the magnet, and you can see in the center, let me try to position it directly over the center. If I get 
right, it's hard to focus, there we go. I'll see this ball of light form. Okay, this is where we actually have constructive light. Once again, everywhere we see light, we have magnetism. Everywhere we see the absence of light, we actually have the dielectric and the interplay between these. And this is where the uh, fallacious, the human concept of lines of force came from. They're not lines of force. They're a simplex constructive and destructive interference between the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia, and acceleration, or respectively, the dielectric and the magnetic. As I hover above this, you'll see it's hard to focus on this uh, holographic image as I'm holding the camera with one hand and the lens with the other. You see this ball of light right here as I'm hovering above it. Now if I get closer, what I should see, just as I'm digging into the donut as I bring this lens closer to the magnet, what I'm going to see is the increasing hyperboloid or digging into the top portion of the hourglass shape, the respective geometry of dielectricity, which of course defines a magnet rather than magnetism, but humans or beings are only fascinated by magnetism about a magnet for obvious reason. But what actually drives a magnet, if you will, analogously, is not magnetism, rather the dielectric, because magnetism is the dielectric field. So as you see here, as I hover above the magnet, we have this yellow greenish ball of light. But as I come closer, I'll try to focus better. As I come closer, I'll try to get them. You see here? I'm sorry it's hard to focus on these fuzzy elements. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs making up this. I'll try to do a better focus and show this better. Sorry, this is hard to do. I'm trying to show you this with one hand and hold the camera with the other. But it's not a matter of holding the camera, it's a matter of focusing on things that have no definite focus. We're actually talking about true holography here. But as you can see here, we have the ball of light of magnetism as I'm hovering, hovering above the toroidal geometry of the magnet. And as I come closer, I'm dropping the uh, super thin, double layered uh, supercell discs onto nearly directly on top of. Uh, the one pole of magnet, and here, of course, we see no light at all. And there's a reason for that. And also, too, if you look closely, I'll actually zoom in a little closer here. Sorry for that shakiness. I humbly apologize. As I come in closer here, you'll see one ball the first here, which you see this bluish green ball of light, and then, of course, it'll open up to a void. And but then you'll see right before I rest the cell on top, you see it right here. We actually have this dull void of remaining magnetism slipping into. You see, this is what people get. And, it, and think, pause your brain, or squeeze your brain, if you will, for a second here. People think, well, one side of a magnet, we have a lot of magnetism. That's one pole. And if you flip the magnet over, that's another pole. But we only have magnetism where we see light hovering above the... Uh, the neodymium, we have this ball of light of the converging. Imagine a, a donut or a swollen, and we have this inverse geometry of the hyperboloid on the center part of the donut. We uh, have here the convergence of the magnetic and this bright reddish yellow ball, as you can see here. But as I get closer, it's going to vanish away. But when I get really close, you'll see the remainder of the magnetism fighting the dielectric or the uh, cell you see right here. You see this light? It's not a reflection from the glass, okay? This is not a reflection from the LEDs to the backside of the, of, uh, the lens of the supercell. It's actually the remainder of the magnetism manifesting in a very weak, here you can actually see it, very, very weakly, but as I get really close, of course, everything goes to black. Well, sure it's black, you blocked off the light. No, that's not the case. I haven't blocked off the light at all. I'm not even resting on top of it at all. Here we go. So anyway, if I actually get over here at an angle too, you'll actually see a better holographic effect. And I probably should have done this a little earlier because I did this about an hour ago. But in the midst of talking and moving this lens with one hand and the phone with another, I forgot to show you that. Here you see that bowl of convergent magnetism right there. But as I get closer, you see it's like parting of the waves right here. You see, uh, I'm just calling this side a set of waves and this side a set of waves, which are not waves. And as I've said endlessly, waves are not things. Waves are what things do. I'm just calling it humorously because they kind of look like a set of waves that are parting as I bring the, uh, the lens 
uh, double set towards the face of the magnet that part away to uh, show the interior of the hyperboloidal geometry that makes up the dielectric, which is one half, of course, of the conjugate geometry of the magnetodielectric, which is the, uh, the yin and the yang of the entire universe. Also, you see that rainbow effect too? You think that's a dichroism of the glass or the lenses or of the very, very uh, nano-thin layer of a fluid solution in there, but that's not the case at all. There we go. So anyway, I had a nice little red, sorry. I do need to move the camera around, so I'm sorry for the shaky image on this, but if I get directly over top, you have a better image of that reddish yellow ball. And then it vanishes away, but it will re-manifest again close and to nothing. But all these lines where you actually see the black is the dielectric constructive. Where you see the white lines, you actually see the magnetic constructive. Okay, This is just simplex constructive and destructive interference. So the yin and yang fight, if you will. It is a, uh, a primordial fight. It's not a fight. I'm just saying that in a roundabout way. A fight between the magnetic and the dielectric. Magnetism is the dielectric field. It's almost, but nowhere near, close analogously of saying that uh, um, ice is the uh, field of water. You know, if you have uh, frozen water, then we actually have uh, a field of water. We have a field of water in losing its energy, and temperature loss is loss of energy manifesting as ice. But anybody with half a brain knows that ice and water are the same damn thing. Well, magnetism and dielectricity are exactly the same damn thing. Magnetism, don't take the analogy too far, is the uh, conjugate, or the ice, if you will, of the dielectric. And the dielectric is definitely um, a near-perfect water analogy if we actually take it to its primordial uh, root in using this water analogy. Anyway, I hope this was explicative, even if the video was shaky. Sorry for that, but... Uh, Everything is constructive and destructive interference. And that's what we're looking at here. Hope I didn't ruin the cell. Because it's such thin glass, I can't rebuild it. It's a very thin glass. And I'll put this, uh, take this big super cell over here and put the magnet back on top of it. I do need to rebuild this uh, super cell. But it's just simplex, constructive, and destructive interference. Undeniably and simply. Passing through here, I'm going to try to draw it with my finger. If I zoom out a little bit because I got fat fingers. We have the uh, dielectric geometry of the hourglass. You see I'm drawing an infinity or hourglass symbol right here. And of course here is the plane of inertia right through the middle of the magnet. But what defines a magnet is not magnetism, it's dielectricity. So this is the geometry of uh, the dielectric, this uh, hourglass shape, there we go, and the toroidal geometry, which would be like a cross-section of the donut. We actually have the... Uh, always at 90 degrees to one another. Wherever you, the dielectric is, you can determine where the magnetic is. Wherever the magnetic is, you take 90 degrees to that, and you actually have the dielectric. So we have the uh, magnetic here and the dielectric here, but all these constructive and destructive lines are the, the fight between the conjugate uh, field geometries, the magnetic and the dielectric. But uh, Mother Nature is literally that simple. And the great horrific irony is it takes a great deal of wisdom to see how simple it is because quantum has convoluted things to the point of absolute eye-rolling absurdity. But anyway, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was explicative and demonstrable, even if sometimes fuzzy and uh, shaky. Sorry about that. Lux Everitas.